Hello everyone, this is Eddie Reyes and today we're going to talk about whether there is a drop in bar exam passage rates throughout the United States. And as you can tell, I'm, I'm sitting down and the reason why is because I, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I, I exercise a lot, I run, I do weights. And you know, you just get to a point where you just get exhausted and that's where I'm at now so I appreciate sitting down. And before we continue, I want to talk about Alexander the Great. And this guy, he believed that he was immortal. And when he would ride off to battle, he would wear elaborate, loud colors. And so the enemy could distinguish him from, from far away. They would say, hey look, there's Alexander the Great. And why am I mentioning Alexander the Great? And I'll get back to that in a bit. But let's, let's now continue. So the question is whether um, bar passage rates are going down throughout the nation. And the answer is, drums please, the answer is yes. And now there seems to be a dispute. Okay, there seems to be like people are saying, well, there was a computer glitch. And others are saying, well, there was a, um, a change in admission standards. But I'll tell you the reason why the bar passage rates are going down. And the answer is this because there is a new subject on the MBE. MBE stands for multi-state bar exam, and that's civil procedure. So now students have to study more. And here is the point, that the way that law students are being taught the law is not a model that maximizes learning. So the real question here is this, how are you studying for the bar exam or even for law school exams? All right, so stay with us. Okay, so now we're gonna briefly talk about the movie The Matrix. And there's this cool scene where the heroine in the story, Trinity, she tells Neo, she tells Neo who's the hero, she's like, um, the Matrix has you. And in fact, in the movie, he was still plugged into the Matrix. So he had no idea that he was, he was, he was still uh, being controlled. And then there's this other scene where he just wakes up, he's released from the power of, of the Matrix. And he wakes up, he looks around and he's like, oh, I'm, oh my God. Like everything that he believed to be true was in fact not true. Um, and I mentioned that because sometimes there are things that we're so used to believe that are actually not true. Let me give you another example. When you have a milk carton in your refrigerator and the expiration date has arrived, what do you do with that product? You discard it. It's no longer useful. And so I mentioned that because modern schools are a product of the industrial age and we're now in the information age. And you may ask, since when? Since 1996, when America Online, AOL, introduced, um, what is that, uh, speed dial internet. And so everyone was like buying, well, they would offer these CD programs, you plug it into your computer and then you- You've got mail. You were connected to, through dial up. And everyone was like, oh my God, this is like the cool, coolest thing. And a lot of people would go to the chat rooms and uh, a lot of people met there. Maybe, maybe your mama and your daddy met there. Hey, who knows? Hey, that's cool if they did. Hey, I'm all for love. And, uh, and so the people would go in and they would type in ASL, age, sex, location. Uh, the point of that is that we're now in the information age and here information is conveyed in a different way and people learn, people learn differently in this, in this age. For example, people learn through practice and application. And in fact, people have always learned through practice and application. And now we're going to shift over to this really fantastic diagram. And this is a diagram by Edgar Dale and it's called the cone of learning. So according to this chart, and you might have your own experiences with this, 10% of what you read, you're actually able to remember. So that is not very high. And those are your assignments, right? In, in law school and even for bar prep, you're told to read. And the bad thing about that is that you only remember 10% or even lectures, look at that, 20% of the lectures you're able to remember 20%. Look at the bottom, 90% of what you do you are able to remember. 
So an activity right there would be to simulate an actual past bar exam. So when you're approaching your exams, this graph here is critical. So it's very important for you to do these actual past exams. Let's move on. But let's talk about schools. Because for many of us, we have, we have been taught that's the best place to learn something. In fact, some of our earlier memories are when we were in school. That's certainly true for me. And the schools were common in 16th century Europe where Protestant religious groups used schools to inculcate children. And back then schools were decentralized and they were private and you also had homeschooling. And then in 1902, you had John D. Rockefeller who created the General Board of Education along with his good pal, Frederick T. Gates. And Mr. Gates will later be the director of the Rockefeller Foundations. Mr. Gates later wrote in the county schools of tomorrow, he later made this statement. The people yield themselves with perfect docility to our molding hand. And why is that? It's because the primary focus of schools is not learning, but it's to indoctrinate or to mold, like Mr. Gates stated. And just as a side note, where is um, Rockefeller's business now? Well, he now prints money. And in fact, the United States government owes him at least 19 trillion dollars that's trillion with a t and yes that is the um, the national debt as of the filming of this we're now in 2016 and of course the national debt is just going to go up and in case you're wondering about the name of the company that that rockefeller owns it's called the federal reserve system but that's another topic for another day now let's go on to law schools and traditions. Let's talk about law and tradition. Now some of you may say, oh you know law schools they're just a tradition, that's just the way we do things in the United States. And the answer to that is no, that is an incorrect perspective. For example, Abraham Lincoln, Mr. Lincoln did not even go to law school. In fact, he did not even take the bar exam to practice his law. All he was required to do was take a certificate of moral character and then he was permitted to practice. And you may say, well, you know, that was, that was a long time ago. Well, let's look at something more recent. Let's look at the, um, the, uh, the trial of the century, 20th century, where we had, we had uh, Johnny Cochran representing O.J. Simpson. And of course, it is unquestionable that Mr. Cochran was an exceptional lawyer. But did you know that he did not take the, a multiple choice section when he took the bar exam? In fact, the NCBE, the National Conference of Bar Examiners, did not exist. In other words, the, uh, the um, multiple, multiple choice section was inserted for a purpose other than to advance education. Now, NCBE was created in 1972. And what happened in 1971? In 1971, you had President Nixon and he took the United States off the gold standard with Executive Order 11615. Now, what that meant is that there would, there would be more debtors. And so multiple choice requirement was just the way to streamline debtors. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets. And I mention that because a lot, of, a lot of times we now have requirements that are made for purposes other than to advance education. Let's transition back to Alexander the Great. And the point here is for you to not follow the crowd. And also the point here is for you to think of yourself as a powerful and a great person because that's what you are. Think of yourself as an eagle. 
and uh, you're made to go to chicken school because in that school they want you to reach the sky so they they make you hop to do that but you're an eagle and you can fly and you can soar but if you try to fly the chickens will say no you're wrong am i saying do not like law school am i saying have a disdain for the bar exam no quite the contrary i'm saying fall in love with law school fall in love with the bar exam and approach these exams with great enthusiasm but do so strategically just like alexander the great will find an opening you must also find the weak spot for these exams and if you're taking the bar exam take past bar exams and if you're in law school study for your law school finals by looking at previously released bar exams and in fact there's a link here to bar exams and these many of these have already been erased from the state bar site so take advantage here of this link and if you're from another state uh, outside of california and then go ahead and do a google search for these exams so think differently like morpheus said free your mind or like mark twain said he said do not let school interfere with your education but what I'm saying is this, think and write like a god. So I hope this helped. Again, my name is Eddie Reyes. Until soon.